Good morning, students. Welcome to what will be, or maybe you're watching this in the afternoon, so good afternoon. It doesn't make sense. This is probably going to be your last video of the year about solving rational equations. So, obviously, how do I solve equations that involve the variable in the denominator of a fraction? Here's your central meme of the day. I couldn't find a good one, so this is just a general, nice, crying Tobey Maguire meme. I like it. All right, so here's our first example, and this is actually a very easy example. Notice that on one side, we have a fraction. On the other side, we also have a fraction. This situation is set up perfectly to do a little cross multiplication. As you know, if you're dividing, you can cancel it by multiplying. So if I multiply this two to the other side, it will cancel. Likewise, if I multiply this x plus four to the other side, it will cancel. I just need to make sure to do it in parentheses. So x times x plus 4. And just make sure to do that. People sometimes forget to do the parentheses. But remember, this x is going to need to distribute to both. So cross multiplication is sometimes your best friend in this section because it enables you to quickly cancel out denominators of fractions by multiplying them to the other side. Now, at this point, I do need to decide. Remember, we have two ways of solving in this uh, whole year. We have isolating x. We have quadratic stuff. Now here, since I have two different kinds of x squares, I need to do quadratic stuff. So I'm hoping I can factor, but maybe I'll have to use the quadratic formula. Either way, let's subtract 12 from both sides to get the zero. And now that I see what quadratic I'm dealing with, I can definitely factor. This factors to x plus six times x minus two. In other words, x is going to equal negative 6 and positive 2. Now, we have to be just a little careful in this chapter because there is the possibility for an extraneous solution. What could cause fractions to have an extraneous solution? Well, remember, I can't divide by 0. That's no good. So if when I plug this back into the denominator of a fraction, I get 0, it will be extraneous. But look, what's negative 6 plus 4? Well, that's two, that's not zero. Also, what's two plus four? Well, that's six, not zero. So since neither of these caused a denominator of zero, I'm good to go. Neither of these are extraneous, but I have to watch out for that. If I ever get a denominator of zero when I plug back in, that would be an extraneous solution. Okay, let's look at example number two. Now this is a more complicated example because look, instead of just one fraction, I have two fractions. That means that cross multiplication is not going to work here. I can't just do this. But I can use some side of some sort of multiplication. Remember, I can multiply this equation by anything I want as long as I distribute it to all three fractions. So I don't want to multiply by three, but I could. Now, Let's think about some things that would be helpful to multiply by. Those things are in the denominator of the fraction. Because if I multiply by what's in the denominator, that will cancel the denominator. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So what I want to do is I want to determine the least common denominator. And the least common denominator, you have experienced this before, like if you have one third plus one fourth, you know the least common denominator would be something like 12. Basically, you're including this and this. The least common denominator for these sorts of fractions is a little more tricky. Remember, you want to get all of the denominators to cancel. So you have to include everything that's in the denominator. So I'm going to include this x minus 2. That's going to be in my least common denominator. I'm going to include this 5. That's in my least common denominator. And I don't need to include an extra x minus 2 because I've already included it. So my least common denominator is x minus 2 times 5. And if you're a little bit lost, just bear with me. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply by x minus 2 times 5 to the top of each fraction. So I'm going to write this over 1 just to help remind me that this is multiplying to the top of each fraction. And we have a lot of experience figuring out what happens when we multiply two fractions together, right? That was what the last section was. So let's look at what happens when I distribute this to the first fraction. I have x over x minus 2. 
but then I'm multiplying by this x minus 2 times 5. Do you see something that cancels? Well, yeah, the x minus 2's cancel, and I'm left with just 5 times x. Oh, look, the denominator canceled. How convenient. Next, we're going to multiply by this 1 over 5. So now I have x minus 2 times 5, whoops, x minus 2 times 5, times 1, but we don't need to write that, over 5. Do you see something that cancels? Oh, the 5s. Well, that's really convenient because now, again, my denominator is canceled. Now we're going to multiply by this, least fra by this last fraction. So I already have the 2 on top. Now I have an x minus 2 times 5 on top, and I have an x minus 2 on the bottom. See something that cancels? Yeah, of course. The x minus 2s cancel, leaving me with just 2 times 5, which is 10. Oh my goodness, I just canceled all the denominators. I don't even need these parentheses here. There's nothing to distribute because of the addition sign. And this is a very easy equation to solve now. These combine to 6x. I can add 2 to the other side. So 6x equals 12. I can divide by 6 to get that x equals 2. How nice was that? So what I did is I determined the LCD, and I multiplied every fraction by the LCD, and it canceled all of the denominators. Awesome. Now here's the issue. I got an answer of x equals 2, but remember, we have to plug this back into the denominators because if any of the denominators equals 0, then I'm not allowed. I have an extraneous solution. So I think that's the case here. Look what happens if I plug this in. I would get 2 divided by x is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 2 divided by 0 is illogical. So this is an extraneous solution, which means there's actually no solution here. It looks like a solution, but when I plug it back in, it results in a denominator of 0, and that's not good. We just have one more example for the whole year. This is bittersweet for me. This will be a good one. Now, I have something very complicated. Here's another one of these two fractions on one side's problems. But the issue is over here, I have a very tricky quadratic. Now, what I could do is I could find my LCD and include the x minus 7. This, by the way, would be 1 over 1. I could include the x minus 7. And I could include the x squared minus 9x plus 14. But that's going to get really complicated and going to be really hard to solve. So instead, here's a tip. Always start by factoring. Because sometimes when I factor, I can find a least common denominator that's lower than if I didn't. So let's factor this real quickly. It factors to x minus 7 times x minus 2. And what do we notice? Oh, look. This fraction has an x minus 7, and this fraction has an x minus 7. So when I'm making my LCD and include this minus x minus 7, I do not need to include it again. This other fraction already has an x minus 7. So all I need to do is include the last x minus 2, and that LCD is good enough. So let's multiply everything by x minus 7 times x minus 2, and again, I'm going to put it over 1 just to help you remember that this is happening on top of the fraction. And let's see if we can cancel without showing work. When I multiply this to the first fraction, what cancels? Oh, the x minus 7's cancel. What am I left with? 3 and x minus 2. So 3 times x minus 2. Easy. Next, what happens when I multiply this times 1? Well, nothing cancels, right? So I'm left with x minus 7 times x minus 2. That's going to be a FOIL problem. That'll be difficult later on. But what will be easy is, look what happens when I multiply it times the last fraction. The x minus 7's cancel, the x minus 2's cancel, and I'm left with just what was on top, 8. So that's easy. So multiplying by the LCD, just don't forget to factor first because you should be able to make the problem a little less complicated for you. Okay, so let's go on and clean up some things. I need to distribute here. I need to FOIL here. So x squared minus 2x minus 7x plus 14 equals 8. Okay, now I need to make a decision. Am I doing isolating x or am I quadraticing? Since I have two different kinds of x's, I need to quadratic. So let's combine the like terms. 
I have 3x minus 2x, that's 1x minus 7x is negative 6x. I have negative 6 plus 14, that's 8. But then aren't I going to be subtracting 8? So I think actually all the numbers here will cancel, which is nice. So this equals 0. Now don't forget, I don't need to reverse FOIL. There's a different way, and that would be with the GCF. I can pull out the X. All right, so that means from this guy, whoops, from this guy, whoops, <laughs> from this guy, whoops, <laughs> X equals zero, from this guy, X equals six. Okay, here are my two answers. Let's quickly plug them back into the denominators to see if anything results in a zero denominator. Well, if I plug back in zero, here, I'd get negative seven, that's good. Here, I'd get a negative seven times a negative two. So that checks out. If I plug back in in six, six minus seven is negative one. Here, six minus seven, negative one, six minus two, four. Okay, I'm good. Both of these answers work because neither of them resulted in a denominator of zero, which means I'm done. Two answers, cool. So summary, if there's more than one fraction, look to multiply by an LCD like we did in examples two and three. And don't forget, if you have a situation like this with a very complicated denominator that could be factored, factor first. But if there's just one fraction like we had in example one, you can just cross multiply and that'll save you a lot of time. All right, thanks for watching. The last video of the year, so sad.